The Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association and Australian Motoring Enthusiast Party Senator for Victoria, Ricky Muir, have launched a draft mandatory automotive repair code of practice. The intention of the code is to provide Australia's 17 million car owners an open and competitive market for auto service and repair. AAA Executive Director Stuart Charity said that the fight has been ongoing for almost nine years and could mean an uncertain future for thousands of independent auto repairers unless something is done soon. Yeah, you've got um, over 20,000 predominantly small family-owned businesses. I mean, even uh, some of those businesses that are part of a larger chain are still franchisees or, or independent workshops that, that are branded. So this is a small business issue, and they're fighting these multinational companies that have um, you know, multi-million dollar marketing budgets and, and, um, uh, and huge resources, and they're controlling the technology. And, and what we've seen over the last five to ten years is um, the industry use workarounds. Uh, trying to find, you know, uh, uh, have a, a relationship with a local dealership or go onto an international website or beg, borrow and steal to get the information. But we're now coming to a really critical point. And you saw the emotion in the room today. If this issue is not addressed, you are going to see tens and thousands of those businesses go out of business and with them will go that consumer choice uh, and competition. And we just can't have that in Australia. Senator Muir said access to technical auto service and repair data is not just an industry problem, but one which affects all car owners and motoring enthusiasts. For members of the general public, so that's the magic thing. Yes, I'm a representative of the Motor Enthusiast Party, but you don't have to be a motor enthusiast to actually be affected by any decisions made in the automotive sector. And this really creates a little bit of uh, security for those who, in competition of course, for those who choose to get their uh, vehicle uh, repaired by independent repairers. What it does is make sure that independent repairers can continue to get the service and repair data that they need so that way the 20 odd thousand um, independent uh, workshops across the country uh, can continue to be independent workshops, continue to create that competition and can con continue to have that reach into outer, uh, outer urban areas and rural areas where the dealer, man uh, the, the dealer networks may not be. Uh, for a motoring enthusiast, it ensures that you're able to um, you know, have your vehicle uh, looked after by the repairer or the uh, tuner of your choice uh, at a, a, a cost competitive price. Senator Muir may not be around long enough to present his document to the Senate. This weekend's double disillusion election may well see the man who went from being an unemployed timber worker to an Australian senator back job hunting once again. But has his brief stay in the political system made him more or less cynical of the whole process? A great deal more cynical. Uh, I came into Parliament as a, a relatively cynical person and I wasn't sure if I should be public about that but uh, I'm more than happy now to stand up and say oh, this, this place is full of secret agendas, it is full of people walking around who are highly paid lobbyists who can push one side of a story across and this is one of those exact sto same stories. These independent repairers that were here today, if it wasn't for um, the AAAA trying to unite them and making sure that they put their personal views out to Parliament, other uh, lobbyists who had been walking around highly paid um, in Parliament House would have been the only people that were here. And I was so happy to see that we've been able to unite the independent repairers and have something like this go through. So, yes, it's a cynical place, but I tell you what, with um, a little bit of diversity and independence in there, things can change very, very quick. The work done by Muir has helped move the whole long running saga along a lot quicker, said Stuart Charity, who is hoping that Mr. Muir may stay a senator after this Saturday. There's a, there is an, a political establishment in, in Canberra, uh, and you, you know the, the Labor and Liberal Party. It, it's it's really hard to break in. Um, the car industry live there. They basically live in Parliament House, um, and they walk into you know parliamentarians' offices uh, at will. And every time we go into an office, they come in after us and uh, say that you know they're just grandstanding. This isn't an issue. So um, it, it's been so important to have someone like Ricky Muir you know, in Canberra on our side that understands. You know, I mean, he's lived a real life. He, he uh, uh, he, he runs a car, he's a motoring enthusiast, he understands how our industry works and he's been able to, to really uh, capture our issue and, and, and help us open some doors. So that's been important. Um, there are others as well, you know, Nick Xenophon is, is, is right behind this issue, um, Australian Greens, um, we've met with John Madigan, uh, you name it, we've, we've met with virtually every uh, crossbencher um, and all the key players across uh, the political spectrum. But um, Ricky Muir's um, role in this is he's understated a bit. It's been really, really important. Um, the other change has been 
uh, getting the industry mobilised. Uh, there are literally hundreds of repairers that have written to their local MPs um, and invited them down uh, to see what's going on. So, and that has been those two things have been the real game changer here. While the odds are firmly stacked against him, Muir is hoping that the Victorian public will allow him to finish the job he started. Um, uh, you know, we've been able to do a lot of work in the background, uh, and it's at a point now where we just need to be able to stay in Parliament a lot longer than two years. A six-year term reduced to two is not enough. Uh, everything takes its time. We're at a point where we've got some great information on the record. We really want to start supporting uh, and promoting uh, uh, motorsport in Australia, so that way the aftermarket industries can grow and, and really prosper. And I think we're at that point now where the other parliamentarians are listening. We need to stay in there. Uh, certainly um, make sure you, you number every box above the line in your chosen order to make sure your vote counts to the last person's elected, starting with the Australian Motor Enthusiast Party.